Hey guys, Marissa, kitchentablestamper.com. Today I've got this adorable, thanks, you mean the world to me note card. I saw this in Stampin' Up's um, weekly succeed newsletter. So when you're a Stampin' Up demonstrator, um, Stampin' Up just likes to wow you with fantastic um, creative ideas. And one of the benefits of being a demonstrator is a weekly succeed email with tons of awesome inspiration in every single week. So um, being a demonstrator is really awesome and there's always good creative support. And this card happened to wow me and I used it for a coffee and a card Wednesday. So um, I needed a couple of samples of it anyways for my coffee and a card class and thought, hey, I'm gonna pull out the camera and do a video for you anyways with this fun inking technique. So the materials that you'll need supplies like paper-wise are pool party, card base. This is eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter. Then I've got another piece of uh, pool party cardstock. This is four by five and a quarter. I've got a scrap of Poppy Parade cardstock, about one by three will do. I'm Got a nice long piece here. Um, at least one half inch by three of basic black. Um, at least one and a half by three scrap of Whisper White. I've got, I don't know, maybe two inches, inch and a half of Granny Apple Green uh, Texture Weave Ribbon. And then a piece of Bright's Designer Series Paper, Poppy Parade. And this is the pattern that's got the script on one side and this kind of um, Venetian, I guess, on the other side. I've also gone ahead and die cut my watercolor paper and I die cut this with the stitch rectangle dies and I used this C size rectangle it's the third largest it's four and three eighths by three inches we're gonna do a watercolor technique here so I want to start with our watercolor paper and do the first step now the watercolor process that we're gonna do is gonna require two steps so we're gonna do the lay down the base color and let it dry for a bit. We'll do some other things while we wait for it to dry. But you want to protect your surface. I'm gonna use my grid paper, and I got a little watercolor palette, little tray here, and I'm going to add a drop or two of Daffodil Delight reinker into this tray, and then I'm going to add a drop or two of Granny Apple Green Stampin' Ink into this tray. Now I'm gonna take my water, my aqua painter here and a paper towel. I'm gonna give my aqua painter a little squeeze and really wet the brush. You'll feel the water draw in the aqua painter and bubbles almost like a water cooler. So you'll know that the water is going down into the brush. You want a nice wet brush. And you're gonna take this watercolor stitch rectangle and just um, kind of do a base of water where your watercolor background is gonna go and really saturate the paper. Then you'll pick up using your lighter color first. We're gonna grab our Daffodil Delight. We're going to, just where we put the water, swipe in some of that gorgeous color. Now you can do as much or as little as you like and it's workable. You can go back to it. You can add to it if you like. And then I'm gonna give my brush a little squeeze and clean it off. Move to the Granny Apple reinker here. Mix that up with the water and then bring it to the paper and bring the two colors together. Now where they come together and they touch, I'm going to actually go ahead and clear and clean my brush again and I wanna just keep gently squeezing and cleaning off the brush until it runs clear. Then I'm gonna pick up a little bit more Daffodil Delight and I'm going to blend where those two colors meet just really lightly, blend those two together. I'm gonna to set that aside and let it dry and every one of these is going to be very, very different. All right, so we'll leave that to dry for a little bit. Now, I've got my white cardstock here. This is just my Whisper White cardstock. And I'm going to take Bermuda Bay Stampin' Pad and this awesome tie image. Now, this is from the Well Dressed stamp set. 
This well-dressed stamp set is an eight-piece cling rubber set and it's brand new celebration reward. So with a $50 purchase at marissaalvarez.stampinup.net, you can choose the well-dressed stamp set for free as your reward for any $50 purchase before tax and shipping. So we're going to stamp our tie and cut that guy out. Move the ink pad before I put something in it. We're just going to use scissors. Give that a fussy cut. Okay, so I've gone around, trim that guy out. There's our little tie. Next, let's grab the big shot and we're going to do a little bit of die cutting here. I've got this time the hooray die. And the last card, I used the thanks die. And these word dies are from the well-written die set. It's a 24-piece die set, and it mixes and matches with the well-said stamp set. All right, so I've got my big shot here. We're going to try a little different greeting, try and get some variety here in our sentiments. I'm going to put my Poppy Parade cardstock and my hooray word. Let's go ahead and die cut that one out. For this project, I just want hooray. So my hooray is kind of stuck in the die. If you've got that happen, you can take a little washi tape, a little low tack tape, and pull your cut right out of the die. Pretty cool trick, huh? All right, so let's clean out the negative spaces and there's our little hooray. On our sample I used thanks you mean the world to me. On this one we're gonna do hooray time for a new adventure. Let's see how that works out. Got a little more stamping to do. I've got basic black cardstock and Versamark ink. I've got a an embossing buddy. I'm just gonna rub the embossing buddy over my cardstock white embossing powder standing by. I like to put my embossing powder in a little um, resealable container like this so that I can ink up, stamp my image, grab the opposite end, and for little sentiments and small pieces like this, you can just dunk into that container, tap off the excess, and there's your perfect um, sentiment ready to emboss. All right, now for the heat tool. Let's go ahead and fire that up and change this. Melt the powder. Okay, that looks good. Now let's just snip this one out with scissors. We're gonna cut real close. All right, hooray. Time for a new adventure. I love that. Let's see how it works on the card. All right, but first we've got a next step in inking. So I'm gonna protect my surface again. Also going to take a small box, a little shoe box, something like that. Something that's kind of deep, but it doesn't have to be too wide. We're gonna take that piece that we watercolored earlier and just drop it down into the bottom of the box. Then that little palette, watercolor palette, we're going to drop several drops of Bermuda Bay into our palette. So I got three or four drops there. We're going to grab our water brush again and we're going to really soak up all that ink. You just really want to saturate this brush. You want it dripping with ink, which means it's going to be kind of messy to clean out. And we're going to hold the brush above our index finger. So you're holding it loose at the end of the brush. You're going to tap the brush against your finger and it's going to just splat little drops of Bermuda Bay ink. The idea here is just really saturate that brush and own it. Where the drips fall, the drips fall. There it is. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Pick it up out of the box and there's our spatter. All right, now 
The next step for us is going to be to clean out this brush. And the best way to do that is to just grab some paper towel or use your grid paper and you just swipe until it comes clean. Now this isn't a bad time to grab another piece of watercolor paper, maybe make yourself another really cool background image. But as you see, as you just gently squeeze and swipe, you'll clean the ink out of the brush. And once the water runs clear, then you're all prepared to go back to the next color. If you wanted a quick cleanup, you can go right underneath the sink and just run water over it and then swipe it till it's clean and it would clean out even faster. But see, there we are. We're back to a clean brush. Now these drips will dry faster than our original coat of watercolor, but they still need to be set aside for a minute to dry. My big shot here. We're going to go ahead and emboss this with a subtle embossing folder and give it some nice texture. Just pop that folder right into the machine and give a crank. There's our gorgeous subtle texture. It just looks like a linen um, finish. It's really nice with the tie. All right, so there's our card base and our pool party layer. I'm going to add my pool party later, layer with Stampin' Dimensionals. It'll be my only um, bumped up layer. Okay, dimensionals are all sticky. We can center this layer on our card front and get a really nice dimensional base for our watercolor. Bring the watercolor back in here and all those fun little elements that we've made. Hooray, time for a new adventure. And here's our little fussy cut tie. Let's get some multi-purpose liquid glue. We're gonna add some multi-purpose liquid glue to the back of these elements and glue them on. I like to just go ahead and add the element, but we don't have to burnish it down quite yet because I wanna see where this hooray is gonna land because the hooray is a little bit different shape than the thanks. So I'm just dotting some of that liquid adhesive and then spreading it on the back of hooray. A little bit goes a very long way. Let's kind of lay that in. I think I like that placement, but again, I'm holding off on burnishing it down. A little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue. Just swipe a bit on the back of Time for a New Adventure. And let's lay that one in underneath Hooray. I think I like the placement, so I'll go ahead and make small adjustments and then burnish everything down. I've got a little bit of this Granny Apple Texture Weave ribbon. I'm gonna fold that in half. I'm gonna staple it to the back of our watercolor panel. Now you could use a regular office supply, like standard size staple. It would look just fine right here, but I always keep a little tiny attacher around. I'm gonna take some snail adhesive and run a strip of snail adhesive down the edge of my designer series paper. And then I'm gonna pick it up with the watercolor and add a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue right next to that ribbon. And then multi-purpose liquid glue to the back of my watercolor panel. It's a little bit, can be a little bit warped from working with water, so multi-purpose liquid glue is a great adhesive for this. Can really get a good bond. And you wanna center that right to left on the textured panel and top to bottom. And then go ahead and burnish down. There it is. Hooray, time for a new adventure. And thanks, you mean the world to me. If you've got any questions about the card or the technique, there's anything that I can do to help you stay crafty, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. If you live in the Chicago area and you want to join us for coffee and card sometime, get a little bit inky, you can check the calendar page on the blog, kitchentablestamper.com slash calendar. To shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. 
Thanks for watching.